Thanks for staying with us. Now, sometimes the world seems so upside down, so irrevocably messed up and bizarre. There are hardly words to describe it. Emoji, a Japanese expression, roughly means picture word and was created by Shigetaka. Kurita in 1990. While working for the Chinese telecom company entity Docomo, Kurita would design these pictures, um, this picture words as a feature on their pay, um, pages to make them more appealing to teens. Now, thank goodness we have emojis to express how we feel, especially during these hard times. According to Emojipedia stats, about 5 billion emojis are used on Facebook Messenger every single day wow wow <coughs> can we talk about whatsapp mm. <laughs> Are you know, i didn't bring whatsapp <laughs> i didn't bring whatsapp <coughs> you know what i found out when i found out that today was world emoji day that the most popular emoji is the crying face with the tears you know when mm. you feel like you're crying and then it has a tear yeah. yeah that's the most popular emoji are you sure and really? yes it is and I then that is the one with the nose mask no, not no. Uh, you know this. You know when this one has been around. What with the most mask can't take. You know when you want to laugh, you yeah. put like five or ten of them at once. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually, it's actually the I most. I mean, for me, my most emoji would be um, the psychic, and then uh, <laughs> no, and I then the smiley. Enough, but I now realize, thank God we are talking communication. I now realize that there are some people who should not be sending emoji because they will read another minute to it. Yeah. I mistakenly sent emoji rose flower. Like, you know, the person sent something really nice. I said, oh, I sent roses. The person started toasting me on TV or, or oh WhatsApp. But roses are flower Oh, dear. No, but I didn't know. Hey, <laughs> all right. So a, a huge number of us are poor communicators. And to grow, we all must learn effective communication as a skill to ensure we are passing the right message. Now, Norma Ifanga is a master educator in behavioral change and refinement who uses her inside-out transformational experience and expertise in the area of appearance, behavior, and communication to help individuals and corporate organizations discover their unique identity that makes them distinct globally. She's a lady of soul, heart, style, and class who seeks to see Africans everywhere rise above social prejudice, mediocrity, and stand for what is true, noble, of excellent report, and for the good of all. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Your Africa One with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Thank you so much for joining us, Noma Ifanga. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to see you all. You all look amazing. Thank, Thank you. Look absolutely you well. beautiful. I like your smoky eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Noma, um, I don't Thank know if you, you heard our, our banter earlier on. I don't know if you heard our banter earlier on. I mean, just I early this week. Did. Early this week, well, I, on my own, somebody sent a video, and I really loved the video because I saw that it was so innovative, the solutions he was bringing to, to the world. And by the time I watched the video, I loved the video, I sent roses, you know, because I actually, I actually love using um, emojis on my phone. So I sent roses, and immediately, I started getting toasty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what, what kind of, um, did I communicate wrongly, or I wasn't... Or was I supposed to use those uh, roses or what was the problem, you know, with my communication? Because I think I passed the wrong message. You know, so they say it was George Bernard Shaw that aptly, you know, captured it when he said that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Mm -hmm. So most times... We have what we, we want to communicate, but the other person is receiving a completely different message. So it also depends on where the... Ooh. So communicating that rose probably met a void of some sort hmm. that he or she took a lot deeper than you actually intended. Hmm. And then something can begin to brew up there. So one has to be very careful to think generally and holistically before you make a co or make contact or try to communicate something. Mm. Think about it a lot more holistically. Most people don't listen or most people don't take out the time to think, to pause before they communicate. So they're usually in a hurry only to find out that they have successfully miscommunicated. 
Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'll, okay. I mean, transition girl, I just wanted to follow up with a question that is linked to that because what you're saying now, it points out like uh, we need to have special skills to communicate. So are you saying that there are special skills needed for effective communication? Communication is like any other skill, AK. It is an art that is supposed to be cultivated. Unfortunately, everybody thinks that because they can talk, they can communicate. Mm. So it doesn't necessarily follow that line. You can inform somebody without communicating. Wow. You can communicate without informing as well. Mm. So you have to, it's a skill that one has to cultivate so that at the end of the day, the message that you want to pass across is clear, is understood, and is able to allow the other person take the necessary action that is needed. Mm. Wow. <laughs> right, okay, so I particularly liked what you said about um, that the biggest um, challenge you have in communication is the illusion that the message That's has, right. yeah, has been passed. The biggest the problem in communication. Right. Thank you. Choice of word. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So now as a communicator, how do you rate yourself to know that you have communicated um, effectively? Well, most of the time I ask for feedback. It is what the person says that will tell me or would determine to me whether or not I effectively communicated. So most times, again, people don't take the time to receive feedback or to ask for feedback. And then they would have assumed that they have communicated. And then at the end of the day, when there's a miscommunication or where there's controversy, you begin to wonder, where did I go wrong? So it's always important to receive feedback from who you've communicated. And based on what they've said, you are able to now determine whether or not you have effectively communicated the message that you wanted to convey. It's very, very critical. Okay, so Norma, uh, I'll bring it back to our leaders. Now I want to go to the spiritual line. <laughs> our darling Bishop, uh, Papa Adeboye was trending on Twitter. You know, he sent... On his wife's birthday. Yeah, he sent a message. He tweeted a s series of messages You're on trained. his wife's birthday. And, of course, Twitterians came at him. Because <laughs> even when I read that message, you know, I felt, you know, at some point it made it all about himself more than the celebrant, you know, that he was supposed to be celebrating. On the other hand, our darling vice president also celebrated his wife. His tweet was completely all about her, you know. So I wanted to ask a question, right? How do people, how do we, how do I even put this question now? How do we effectively communicate what we mean? Because I know that that message that he was um, passing across, praising his wife, he was trying to pass a message like she's a good person, she's a this, she's a that. But at some point, he he he, he now switched the thing, and the now thing now became, became you know, it now became so. Now, so that was what triggered all those controversies. Of course, the feminists came at him and all of that. So, how if you were to be in a position to advise, you know, such a man, you know, that knowing that he has so many followers and all of that, how would you even say, you know, what this should have been couched this way? Well, unfortunately. Or fortunately or unfortunately, you can't you can't enforce change on someone who doesn't want to be on anyone who doesn't want to be changed. Mm. Oh, I think you happening. can decide that you want to change. Now, having said that, you find out that people are also very quick to you know, jump on messages without understanding the map of the world of the person who was trying to com communicate. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. And don't forget that people will always interpret different messages based on where they are per time. Mm. So with this two in context, this is a revered man of God. Mm -hmm. And he also comes from a 
an age bracket when where ancient of days things Just are seen like a lot more <laughs> differently than where we are today. The importance that a woman is accorded hmm. at that she was able to do as a backbone, so to speak, for her husband. Unfortunately, in this dispensation, the younger ones think completely differently. So you see that there's a gap in communication. Here he is thinking from his own map of the world, trying to communicate a message. Oh, women should do this. Women should emulate. Unfortunately, the women that he's talking to in this generation think differently and would see that as a level of insult to their person or to their gender. So you see that there's a miscommunication right there. I would have suggested that, you know, for people like this, it's important to also have the right kind of people around you. Say, for example, a person who can be known to be, for example, your information, you know. Oh, we're having a little challenge. Through what you want to communicate. It will also help you to understand that, oh, sir, with the people that you're talking to, this is should be communicated differently. So people should learn, especially for people who are in positions where whatever they say is almost uh, life, so to speak, then you must be careful to surround yourself with the kind of people that give you the kind of advice that helps you to manage whatever message you want to pass across. If not in this situation, there will definitely be a miscommunication. Hmm. All right. So I think you we know, have absolutely, a, yeah. I, I absolutely agree with her because the more influential you are, the more you wear that burden of effective communication because exactly. like you said you have uh, no excuse yes you have no task. excuse your, your, some people their word is literally like a, a strong authority so mm -hmm. if they say There's run no away Trump. people take them <laughs> literally yeah. example trump followers mm -hmm. right you know so um I do have another question as well. So now, uh, in the spirit of leadership, bringing this home to Nigeria, um, as a leader, lately we haven't had a lot of good news in the society, both at the workplace and leadership and all that. And so we see bad news flying left, right, center. How do you um, encourage people when you don't have any good news for them? Hmm. 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 That's a tough one. <laughs> Sandy, that's a very interesting question, right? Because a lot of things have to be considered. The person that you're talking to, how emotionally stable are they to even receive the message that you want to communicate? You must look through the spectrum of the cater of people that you're trying to communicate per time. And that's another feedback for people people who are aspiring to be communicators. You must understand the audience that is listening to your message. In this case, if it's something that is a sad message, or it may not be for grief, it may even be you trying to give somebody feedback. There's something that we call in the Toastmasters platform, we call it the sandwich approach, right? So you try, you start off giving commendations about what you want to say. Oh, the brilliant things about that person, how they are so successful in certain areas. But when you add the but, it almost just kills everything you've said. So you, are, you, you can say something like, in areas that I would love you to you know, improve upon. These are X, Y, Z things that you need to pay attention to. The person, the essence of communication is not to kill the person's confidence or any certain potentials that the person has. The essence is to help the person get better. So it's not to show that, oh, you are more authoritative in, uh, in, in enlightenment and all of that. It's for you to be able to pass a message across in such a way that the person is able to receive it as something that is not bad, but something that helps them to improve. So one has to be very, very conscious of things like that. 
And most people don't. You know, they just go ahead and say, oh, for example, somebody dies and then you say, oh, hey, oh, they killed. You didn't even find out where is the person? <laughs> you know, how, where are, you, are there with people that can help them, you know, support them through this grief or something? You have to be able to prepare the mind of, hmm. of the person. Okay. Who is All right. For so information, whether good or bad. So these are things that we should, you know, put in, in context while communicating. Okay, so um, Barbara has joined this conversation. Barbara Ezefe is a well-rounded marketing and communication professional with over 12 years of um, um, experience across retail asset management and digital ecosystem. Areas of channel marketing enterprise spans across diverse segments and industries, driving adoption, customer acquisition, customer retention, and inflow across digital physical channels promoting sales growth and revenue enhancement, an avid self-developer constantly seeking to improve and share her knowledge and expertise in marketing and communication and initiatives that will have impact. Now, AK has a question for Barbara for the workplace. <laughs> so quickly, okay. before we take a break, Barbara, thank you for joining us. Okay, so I, I was going to ask because it, I find it very exciting, especially when you mention marketing because it's a very tough one especially in some industries, you can say the wrong thing and you have killed it. So what role does formal education play in effective communication? So you know what, um, formal education, while it enhances communication and effective communication, I feel communication because the word communication is really just speaking or conveying a message and letting the person who you're respond, who you're asking that message understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So formal education enhances it, but it doesn't necessarily give you an urge per se. Mm -hmm. As long as you're able to communicate, say something to the next person and that person understands what you're saying. That's what it is. Um, I think sometimes because we call it communication, a lot of people think you have to go to school. Um, it's, it's sometimes it's really just common sense, really. And being aware of your audience, um, like Norma said, it's really being aware of your audience. Um, a lot of people really most times try to, when they're speaking, they speak sometimes, I say some things in my head and when I say those things in my head, I believe that I'm communicating it. Those things I'm thinking in my head are coming out of my mouth, but it's totally different. Um, so formal education does not really, um, it enhances uh, because you're aware, but communication is really just being aware and um, common sense really. Okay, so when you say common sense, we've had this um, sentence that <laughs> common sense is not so common. <laughs> yeah, the common sense is not so common. So how do you tie emotional intelligence into it? Because that's one of the things I find lacking in the workplace. You want to address someone that's a subordinate. You want to address someone that probably is not on the same level, is not on the same grade. And you feel that this is a corporate environment. You have to take it. Do you feel that it affects productivity? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, now, I would give an example. If you're having problems, say, with your boss, because you mentioned the subordination, if you're having problems with your boss um, and your, your boss is not aware of things that are going on. Okay, sorry. No, 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 but, but <laughs> we, should, we should follow the boss one because there's a trending story, NDD, okay. um, the NDDC and Apabio okay, story. I have... Yes. So can we, can we follow the boss matter? Okay, go ahead, please, please go ahead. <laughs> Say your boss is harassing you, like she's accusing um, Akabio of sexual harassment. Wow. So how do you communicate that? Hmm. So it's a very good question. So what I would do is, um, the first thing I would do would be to reach out to other colleagues on my boss's level, who I feel comfortable talking to. Mm and tell them what my, how, you know, this is my situation and how do I tackle it? Um, I wouldn't push and first try to respond immediately to my boss, because again, I might have issues with how to control my temper. And I believe um, that was the situation yeah, um, yeah. with, um, yes, yeah, you yeah. Know, he also brought in her temper. Um, I would always say, I would speak to bosses and people around his level ask how to deal with it, and then go back um, to sort of 
use emotional intelligence, my knowledge from what I've heard people say, and then go back and try to tackle that. Mm. Um, I always say that there's a rule of thumb. When someone hits you with something or not hits you literally, um, when you're, you're facing harassment, let's just say in an email, it, it can be harassment, it can be bullying. Um, when you just get a sense of hostility from someone and you want to respond, it's very difficult. I'm even trying to work on myself sometimes. It, there's a rule of thumb to always take at least 10 minutes, depending on how angry you are before mm. you respond. Mm. Or if you can't, just take a deep breath and then respond. Ah, she's um, hostile to me. you're really angry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She's very hostile to me. I'm going to take a deep breath. I will go on a break. <laughs> we'll, yes. <be> right back. <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with it later. <laughs>